Hi everyone and welcome to the next IOTD that is image of the day. For those who are new, this is the 12th part and this is an ongoing series daily at 10 p.m. on the Anacademy YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Preeti Sharma. I've done my MBBS and MD in pathology from Safdar Jung Hospital in New Delhi and I teach pathology and microbiology on the platform of Anacademy. Well, in this IOTD series, today we have another spectrum of images that will help you diagnose a particular organism and I think it's quite a classical one so we should directly jump on to diagnosing the same we've got a classical clinical uh, presentation two things that are shown very classically over here the first and the second and i know you guys have guessed that this is clostridium tetani or tetanus infection so this shows the uh, the grinning or the smiling appearance that is rhesus sardonicus and this shows the classical posture that is opisthotonus so that is how a classical question of a clinical presentation would come to you jumping on to how the microbiology pictures would be correlated with this will be these three pictures that are given let's go one by one let's zoom into each picture one by one so let's pick up the first image over here and this is what you see so first and foremost are they cocci or are they bacilli they are elongated so they are bacilli and they are blue violet in color so they are gram positive bacilli also what you see apart from that are these roundish structures which are available or present at the terminal end so basically they are spore forming bacilli they are spore forming organisms now where is the spore makes all the difference so not only this picture in this picture i guess everyone can guess that the spore is present right at the tip right at the terminal end but you must know that for every clostridium for that matter so i've tried to pick up an image from your standard textbooks and let's see that when we are dealing with the most common variety of spore presence most commonly spore formation or spore location is subterminal that's a favorite mcq the most common location of the spores is subterminal little away from the terminal so if you see over here it's not right at the tip it's a little before the tip so for example clostridium perfringens if they ask you what kind of spore does it show you it shows you subterminal most of the spore forming organisms apart from clostridium if they would have asked you bacillus so most of them tend to show you subterminal location however when you're talking about clostridium tetani you're talking about clostridium tertium they have te in them right so clostridium tetani and clostridium tertium show you terminal spores so look at this picture over here and this picture over here both of them one of them is clostridium tetani one of them is clostridium tertium and both of them show you the terminal spores then how do you differentiate between them because both of them are terminal one of them the spores is round the spores is round and in the other one the spore is oval you know easier to learn is the one which has a round spore let me draw that again for you so if this is the bacillus the spore is round it's looking like a drumstick right remember clostridium tetani looks like a drumstick whereas look at clostridium tertium again it's elongated bacillus but the spore this time is oval oval like a tennis racket so tetani is drumstick tertium is tennis racket both of them show you a terminal spore just in case you get confused in the exam that which was drumstick and which was tennis racket remember tertium t e r tertium t e r should remind you of t e r that is tennis racket tertium is tennis racket t e r tennis racket and tetani is drumstick perfringens is the most common variety subterminal the third fourth one is bifermentins so now if you see this one over here where do you see the spore the spore is right in the center right in the center it has a central spore and how am i expected to learn that see when you use the word bi bi sounds like it's dividing something into two parts bi divided into two parts so this is where the spore is present right in the center dividing it into bi dividing it into two parts so a quick recap for everyone that when we are dealing with tertium and tetani we have terminal spores when we are dealing with perfringens that's the most common subterminal and when we are dealing with bifermentins it is central so coming back to the image over here we had round terminal spores so this was 
clostridium tetani, round spores, drumstick appearance. What else? Now we come to this blood agar picture over here. Let's zoom into that. What is this showing you? This is showing you the phenomenon of swarming. So does clostridium tetani show you swarming? Yes. Can you see the concentric, the round and round concentric motility? It can show you swarming. So they next ask you that which are the organisms that can show you swarming. So we have a simple mnemonic for the same and that is PVCs. I'm sure you've heard of polyvinyl chloride PVCs. So P for Proteus, V for Vibrio parahemolyticus, C for Clostridium tetani, Clostridium tetani and S for Ceratia. So repeating Proteus, Vibrio parahemolyticus, Clostridium tetani, Ceratia, they show you the formation of swarming. Coming back, coming to the last image which is the, uh, con which is the control and the test shown over here. So there is a culture media that has been shown over here and that happens to be Robertson's cooked meat broth. So Robertson's cooked meat broth, tell me guys, is it an aerobic media or an anaerobic media? So I hope you all remember it is an anaerobic media and isn't Clostridium tetani an anaerobe? So it will grow in that medium and what color does it give? It gives a black color. Now when I say it gives a black color, that is referred to as a proteolytic reaction. That is referred to as a proteolytic reaction. So now I have a small homework for all of you. In the comment section, all of you are going to tell me which is the clostridium which gives us a saccharolytic reaction. So let's see how many of you are revising your theory well. And then I'll be interacting with you in the comments and also finding out whether you gave the right answer or not. So tell me in the comment section. Well guys, with that we finish the image spectrum of the day. A quick recap. Image number 1, Rhysis sardonicus. Image number 2, Opisthotonus. Image number 3, Drumstick appearance of Clostridium tetani. Image number 4, Swarming, which can be seen in a lot of other organisms. And number 5, Robertson's cooked meat broth, which happens to be giving you a black or a proteolytic reaction. Well, that's the end of the IOTD image of the day. And I hope you guys are also following the early morning. 7.45 a.m. special classes from my side on the Unacademy app. That is the Kickstart morning sessions. They are free classes for everyone to view. And just not that, you have a whole set of classes going on all day at all the times on the Unacademy platform, which I'm sure you guys are aware, aware of. So for that, you just need to download the Unacademy app, enter the code PATHO10, and you will have access to all the classes. All the free classes would get unlogged for all of you. Having said that, there is a day daily IOTD which is happening on the YouTube channel daily at 10 p.m. So I hope you guys are following the same and also a very good news for most students who are exam going. 23rd to 30th of August micro bio crash course on the Unacademy YouTube channel every day at 3 p.m. So if you feel that 3 p.m. is the time where you get there is a post lunch slumber that you face. So 3 p.m. there's a session that I'll be uploading every day from 23rd to 30th of August and we'll be revising 30 to 40 minutes of microbiology some really important points for your exam. So hoping to see all of you subscribe to the channel and join me for the same. Thanks a ton for joining in guys. See you tomorrow same time 10 p.m. with another IOTD which is going to be another microbiology image. Thanks for joining. Good night.